Hey YouTube, Roy Marco coming here with Marco Custom Models, talking today all about the Hemi Dart. This car is a little special to me. I have a friend uh, in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada here that used to own a car back in the 70s, 80s. And uh, that car is known to be the only Hemi Dart that has never been uh, welded with a roll cage in it. And um, still is around today and it went at a uh, Mecham auction. I think it sold a few years back for just over $300,000. I'm building uh, three of these models. So this is the first one that I wanted to use as a test bed to kind of see, you know, where things fit, how things fit. Some things I want to change for doing another one for myself and also uh, building one for my friend Mike. Mike used to own this uh, 1968 Hemi Dart. There he is right there. It's a little picture of it. And uh, this car was actually owned by Danny Mancini, Mancini Racing. And um, yeah, it just became, he had the car for a few years and then ended up selling it and the rest is history. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk about some of the things in this kit that are unique to the 68 Hemi Dart. Also, some of the things that uh, are unique to 68 Hemi Dart that never did get uh, put in the kit. But um, a lot of people would consider this, uh, you'll hear him referred to as an LO23, and that's the first four digits of the VIN. The L stands for Dart, the O stands for Super Sport, the 2 stands for Tudor, 3 is Hard Top, the next digit would be uh, an M, which is Special Engine, which is the V8, the Hemi uh, 426, 425 horse, and um, 8 then would be for 1968, and B would be for Hemtremic, Michigan. So that's sort of how the VIN goes. And uh, this paint code came out as 999. And there's only a handful of uh, Dodges that were produced with that paint code. And that would be that it was left in primer. The reason the front fenders and hood were black is because they were fiberglass. And the hood was held down with hood pins. And this car was built for NHRA Super Sport, uh, Super Stock Drag Racing. Sorry, Super Stock Drag Racing. And uh, there was 80 of them built by the uh, Hertz company, and and uh, this is how they would have been shipped to you, except on this car I put on a set of rear slicks, but I have it on the stock steelies. Um, when, you, when the cars were shipped, uh, they would have had a, an earlier Dodge wheel, something like this. I got this out of the Mobius uh, 65 Plymouth, I think it is, and... Um, Anyway, it comes with an extra set of stock wheels. Uh, there's a set of drag wheels in it. So um, anyway, I was able to find some tires and make that work. And those are going to go on my as-shipped uh, build that I'm doing that's also going to be uh, in primer and black. So uh, the kit comes with these wheels here, which are like Krager SSs. Uh, they're all the same depth on the outside, but the backs have different uh, depths. And they're a nice-looking wheel, too. They uh, look really good on the model. A um, couple of things that the model uh, didn't get was the well they got the what they did was they gave you uh, this as an as an updated firewall uh, compared to this firewall. So the difference I'll get both hands here. So the difference is you can see that they moved where the brake booster goes uh, or the brake master cylinder. They moved it up higher to clear the Hemi engine. And they also uh, don't want you to put the steering box in because of the clearance of the headers. So they eliminated that hole there. The only thing is the brake booster they give you, this is put together out of two pieces. It has a brake uh, booster on it. And anyway, all of these cars are manual brakes. So what I did was uh, I uh, proceeded to shorten it and turn it into a manual brake master cylinder. So... If you want to do it correctly, you would still use this firewall and install your manual brake master cylinder on there, uh, and it will actually still clear the uh, the valve covers on that big 426 Hemi. So that's something I also did on this model. I'll show you uh, the inner door panels. They uh, didn't give you update. They gave you a floor pan, which doesn't have a back seat, which is good. But these still have window cranks on it and. It had the armrests and the door pulls, of course, but didn't have the emblem here. Did not have the rear window crank because they don't roll down in this model, or on the wheel car. They also, you didn't have rear armrests uh, with no back seat. So I shaved those off, which I'll show you in that model there. So anyway, that's there. And then there's also, for the windows to go up and down, the, there's a strap 
as you can see in this picture here. And I also added that to the model. So we'll get to that. Another thing that uh, they did is this is the stock uh, seat that, that comes with the kit when they when it was released it was first released as a GTS and then they uh, added with a 440 cubic inch engine and then they added uh, um, the package to make it the Hemi Dart with the hood and the rear end which is the Dana 60 and all that good stuff so uh, I ended up using Dodge A100 seats which you'll see in that car when I pull the body off the Dodge A100 seats I had to fill in the side here these are from Lindbergh on their um, Dodge pickup is known as the Little Red Express, uh, Little Red Wagon, and yeah, so the, those are the seats I ended up having to use. Also, the car comes set up as a manual transmission car. It comes with pedals that you glue on the floor for uh, either manual or automatic transmission. So in the Hemi Dart, you get this tree here, which comes with the hood, the hood scoop. The Hemi block, the uh, deep sump oil pan, the Hemi heads, and your intake cross ram intake manifold, as well as your uh, clutch pedal assembly. Now, these cars also did come in an automatic, um, and that's how I built this car here. So I still have to build the floor shifter, but the automatic, uh, what I did was they come with this is the 440 automatic uh, halves, and a 440 block is very much like the Hemi engine in the sense of uh, visual looks and size and dimension without the cylinder heads. So what I did was I went ahead and actually glued these two together and then I shaved off the pins over here and then I glued on the Hemi heads to make a Hemi with an automatic. But on the next car that I'm building as Mike's car, I actually took an engine block, glued it together, cut off the transmission and then I glued the 440 together and cut off the engine and now I'll be able to glue these together and make a, a Hemi 426 Hemi with the 727 uh, torque flight transmission so either way you want to do that you can accomplish that in both ways the thing about doing it this way is I actually don't have a usable bell housing um, left over because you, when you saw it you kind of lose a little bit of plastic thickness and I don't have a usable four, uh, 440 block so you can do that either way. So uh, this one I achieved by cutting it in the car. I just glued the 440 together with Hemi heads. Nobody will be able to know the difference. Um, one of the things I did is I de-chromed the grill. This is uh, the grill here. This is the chrome version. I de-chromed it and then painted the grill black on the car. And then I painted it silver. By using a chrome pen, I was able, this is a, the pen I used I was able to go around the outside edge and make a, a bright chrome ring so it gives that that tritone look the black the silver plastic pieces as well as the chrome and this pen works really good all you got to do is go on an edge and you can just draw on your chrome like that and when that dries it brightens up to uh, you can actually see the reflection looks a lot like chrome so you can go ahead and use a pen like this on a around windows and things like that this is uh, called liquid chrome and I bought this as a pack of three and I think it was like 35 bucks so anyway um, I had a hobby shop friend of mine bring it in but it's uh, I don't usually see them at the hobby shop so anyway that's something to uh, to look at there small parts like the little uh, hood pins I actually glued on the hood and I wanted to pick them out later uh, same with the um, door handles. I de-chromed the door handles. I put them on the car, painted it with the body. So that's uh, this here. As you can see, sorry, this is for the Mike's car. And as you can see, I glued the door handles on here. And uh, then I'll paint the car. And then I'll just take my brush and pick those off or use that chrome pen and just make them chrome again. So that's uh, the reason I do that is because when you go to glue on a, you got a car with it's all painted up, you put your door handle on, you try to get it on there, and sometimes uh, you get a little bit of glue on the paint or something like that. And so this way it's just a little cleaner. Uh, for me, that's what works. Uh, everybody has their own technique. What I do want to show you is you can put the steering box in this car, but you do have to take. Uh, I use the Dremel, and I just took off this. I just took off this uh, square part of it here. Just smoothed it out. And then the Hemi heads will fit with the headers. 
and that's what I'll show you in there. So I use the stock firewall, and then I'll use the um, manual master cylinder. Um, one of the things on the body that you want to modify is take off this line here. There was no chrome around the wheel well, but you want to keep the line in the upper part of the fender because it actually has that detail stamped in, but in this case it's a fiberglass fender, but on the car it has that. Another thing is the rear wheel wells. They give you a line to follow. If you follow that line, it's more rounded. So I sort of uh, created my own line to try to follow the way the car looked on the photographs uh, with the with the Hemi Dart rear, rear wheel wells. This is how the body would look untouched. So these are some of the changes. That's the wheel wells one change. You want to take off the GTS on the fender and the front corner markers. The Hemi Darts did not have front corner markers. You want to take off your antenna and the word GTS in the back. One of the things I also did with this model is I glued in this pan instead of uh, so it gets painted with the body. I don't know if it'll focus there. And I put in a uh, piece of tubing just to help support it with the glue so that it's nice and strong on there and won't fall off because all it has is a little edge along the top to glue to. But now it's nice and strong. So when you go to paint that, you don't have to worry about that coming off on you. So you can bodywork this, clean up what you need to clean up. Paint that car the, the color. Uh, the firewall I glue in because it gets painted body color uh, in this application. And same with this uh, the front rad support. It's a unibody car. So um, another thing I did is I glued the tops of the shocks in. You don't see them after that. So then I just pick them off with paint after. And you'll see that in the other uh, build. And one of the things I noticed when I was putting this uh, car together. That this edge has to be trimmed out just a little bit before paint so that the rear window fits in correctly so that's something I'm going to be able to do now before I put this one in paint when it comes to the chassis of the car I glued the battery in the trunk where it's supposed to be you'll never see it I just did it I don't know I mean it's something that you don't have to do uh, usually I, I, I laugh at models where they put in like a bunch of details and then you get it covered up but uh, anyway that's what I did. I just put it there uh, also to help uh, show you where the battery was located in the Hemi Dart. So um, that's what I wanted to do. Has a Dana 60 rear end. If it was built with a manual transmission, automatic cars came with a uh, eight and a half uh, Dodge rear end out of like a C body. Um, this car, uh, the automatic car that uh, Mike's had, they put a Dana 60 in that car so that it had the Dana 60 in it. So uh, I'm putting the Dana 60 in. I don't have the cover on it because his cover was chrome. This cover I put on. So it'll have a chrome cover. I also drilled it uh, the uh, rear end and the front end for steel axles. Um, and he had Krager SS's in the front and the back were a set of uh, Kragers that looked like um, like center lines. So that's what's, that's what's going on there. But I have to still space these out and paint them. So anyway, that's just sort of the start to the other car. So when I get that car finished, I'll show you all of that as well. One of the other things that was done on the back bumper, I just, the car comes with these uh, clear lens taillights. Uh, I opted not to put them in because they stick out and they just, they're clumsy looking. So I went ahead and just used the uh, Tamiya Clear Red. Put it in the uh, taillight assemblies there, and I think they look pretty good, and that's where that's going to be. Also, when you do this car, make sure that you paint the body color between the taillight and the bumper. Um, you know, if you want to make it uh, uh, really correct, okay? One of the things, too, that the car has, uh, depending on the version you're going to build, this hood scoop comes with three pins that hold it down. And a lot of times racers added the third pin in the middle as a support. And uh, but from factory or when they were built, they only had the two outer the two outer pins. So on my uh, if you notice on my car when it comes around, it'll only have the two outer pins in the hood holding it as support. Also, I want to uh, thank um, Ron. He had mentioned that I should put my models on a turntable, and so I gave it a shot. I talked to a friend of mine. Who had given me a turntable and uh, the piece of carbon fiber came from my friend Jasper so uh, thank you to uh, everyone that uh, and we'll see what you can comment whether you like it on a turntable or not 
and that's uh, just so you can see all angles of the car while I'm sitting here talking. So I'm going to just take the uh, car off of the turntable here and show you some other details. So this car is almost finished. I just have to put the bumpers on and build that shifter. So same with the hood. I just popped on that piece of chrome, uh, de-chromed it, glued it on the hood, painted the whole hood, and then just picked it off with that pen. And I think that turned out pretty good. Here's the Hemi engine. I still want to wire it. Not a problem. I'm going to be able to do that. I'll show you why. And um, here's that master cylinder modified without the brake booster on it. So again, don't glue the battery here. That's It even says so in the instructions. And you don't need to put your hood latch assembly in because this car has hood pins holding down the hood. I picked off the top of the shock uh, assemblies there so you can see. If you can focus in on this. All right, I did a wash on the radiator in a little bit of brass and then some also some um, a wash with black on top of the flat to uh, help pick out the radiator. The valve covers came on this 426 in flat block. And of course, Hemi Orange. Underside of the car, you got the headers and uh, the deep sump oil pan. And this, again, I said, like I said, I built it with the uh, 727 automatic. The drive shaft was kind of dinky in this model, so I used the drive shaft out of a Chevy Camaro kit. Uh, I think it was just out of my parts bin. And I dry brushed the suspension and just gave it a kind of a highlight on the front and the rear. And the bottom of these cars came black, same with the uh, engine compartment and the front fenders. So on this model, uh, I glued the upper radiator hose to the radiator. If I want to pop this apart again, I can just pop the body off. Uh, just haven't glued the bumpers on because they will go on last once it's all fully assembled. And there's the interior. And this is that window strap I was talking about. So if you wanted the windows up, if you put windows in the car, you would put the strap all the way down. And in the up position, they just kind of hang to that first line of chrome there. These are those Dodge A100 seats. And I did a wash in the middle on the black. Kind of gives it a little bit of a two-tone, even though they're one color. It's just a way to make the black interior interesting. And then there's the dashboard. And the uh, tachometer would have come in two locations. That's one location that they may have come in, and also on top of the steering column. That's another location. Uh, on the yellow car... Uh, now it actually has the tachometer up on the top and they were not electronic they were cable driven from the distributor so if you wanted to add detail uh, you would run a cable um, from your tack up to the distributor if you wanted to get into that again the batteries in the trunk on this kit so I just put that there even though I detailed it it was just some practice doing some detailing and just getting it in the right location to show you where they're supposed to be on this on the 68 Hemi Dart. Also, the back wheels, uh, these are from a 62 Pontiac kit. And the front wheels are from a Ford, I think, Ranchero. The new Ranchero from 1960 AMT. Um, the bolt pattern may be a little off because, uh, well, I mean, I didn't sit there and caliper and measure it to be 4.5 on 5. But anyway... Um, it looks, I think it looks pretty good with the steelies. That's the look I wanted to go for. Like I said, the second version, I'm going to put these on the back as the shipping, the way the car was shipped. Uh, so that's what I want to do for that the second one I built. On the body, the, um, glass is in. I still have to paint the, uh, I'm going to brush paint the, uh, roof black. I got to put the visors in and the center uh, rear view mirror. It's the only mirror that came on these cars. They never had mirrors on the outside. On the driver's side, I'd like to note they did put a block off plate that was the shape of the base of the mirror that I haven't built yet for this model, which will go in place. And that was uh, just stainless or chrome. So yeah, that's the Hemi Dart build. What else can I tell you about it? Um, yeah, that's it. So when I get into getting this model uh, when I get this model finished I'll do another uh, segment on it as well as uh, when I build my my friend's uh, Mike's car that he had and um, I'll do a, a segment on that too as well when it's finished so if you like please subscribe ring that bell for notifications and have a great day